This video is sponsored by Skillshare, where you can take my two classes on productivity systems and building strong habits. Be one of the first 500 people to sign up with the link below to get a two month free trial. that they've already started to help my own one for when to say yes to check this for, and another for how I choose which videos to make and all of the check right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. now I need you to stay with me here. It's a checklist. That's what I was doing. So recently my friend Matt Diavello put up this video called This Productivity System Will Save Your Life, which was all about checklists and how using them can help you become a lot more effective in your work. And I'll be honest, it's a great video. It's expertly made as always and it introduces the topic perfectly well. That being said, I think there's an area in Matt's video that deserves a bit of expansion. See, there are two types of checklists, the kind you quickly write out when you're just brain dumping a few things you to do or getting ready to go grocery shopping and need to know what to buy, and then the much more impactful type on which Matt's video focuses. These are the checklists followed by astronauts, surgeons, and anyone else whose work consists of lots of complex, multi-step processes that are repeated for each new job. The checklists these people use are, as the author Greg McKeown points out in Matt's video, based on observations of an established process and refined over time. Another crucial point about them, they aren't written out from scratch each time they're used. In other words, the checklists that are used by professionals are typically copies that are based on templates. A template is essentially a master version of a checklist that's usually not used or written on. Instead, every time it's needed, a copy is made, and that copy is where you do your actual checking. Now, I say usually because the advent of computers has made it easier to work directly off of a master list, and that's what some people, including Matt, actually do. And here's a bit more context on that. Hey Thomas, thanks so much for thinking of me, man. Uh, I'm excited that I'm not the only one that geeks out about this kind of stuff. So when it comes to the checklist that I make, I store all of them on Apple Notes. I've got Apple Notes open right here. These are my like five or six checklists that I use most frequently. This first one right here is actually for taxes. <laughs> uh, if this could get any more boring. I have one that's called, should I say yes? Of course I have a, a travel checklist. And then there are those checklists that are just very complicated and help me out for really tricky tasks and, and tricky projects. I actually don't duplicate these. I don't print it out and check them off. I just check and uncheck them. At the end of the day, I'll go back in and I will uncheck each one. And this is usually, I'll usually just do this before my next trip. I'll go back in before my next trip and I will uncheck everything and then start that process over from scratch. For me, it's, it's really about finding the least friction possible, finding a system that works well for me, using Apple Notes and, and using these uh, pre-created templates in there that I've made have really helped me out a whole lot. So Matt's system is proof that simply working off of a master checklist can work pretty well, as long as you're using an app that makes it really easy to uncheck your tasks once you're done. It's much better than writing out your checklist from scratch each time, which for complex tasks can be prone to error and is only slightly better than trying to go off of memory alone. Still, I think creating copies from a template list can often work better. For one thing, making copies allows you to work on multiple projects at the same time, say batching filming tasks at one location that will be used for two upcoming videos. Videos. And it also saves you from having to spend the time unchecking dozens of tasks at the end of the day. 
Now, Matt's video does touch on making copies briefly when he mentions that Greg likes to print out his checklists, but I want to expand on this idea a little bit more and show you some methods that I think work even better. And keep this in mind, by the end of this video, you're going to want to be using templates for more than just checklists, at least if I've done my job correctly, because in truth, I'm just using checklists as an example to introduce the topic of templates as a whole. From research to music production to filmmaking and beyond, professionals rely on templates to help them create useful starting points for their work every single day. Take a mixing engineer, for example. If the engineer knows he'll be working with recordings of drums, guitars, vocals, and more, he's probably going to build a project template that lets him start with pre-made tracks for all those things. In fact, most engineers actually have templates that go way beyond that, with additional tracks for effects in place as well. And if you can master how to use templates in your own work, Work, you'll save a ton of time and be a lot more productive. But for now, let's just talk about checklists. Now, like I said before, you could just make paper printouts of your checklists and work off of those. But why do a job on paper that's so much more easily done on a phone or on a computer? In fact, I think we're hurting these trees feelings even talking about that. So let's talk about some additional ways that you can make copies of your checklist templates. I want to show you a couple of quick demos in two different apps, though it must be noted that a lot of task management apps do have the ability to create templates. And as you learned from Matt, you can even do the exact same thing in a lot of note taking apps, provided that they have a checklist feature. That being said, let's look at what is probably my favorite completely free task management application, which is Microsoft to do. Now the astute viewers in my audience who have seen a lot of my to do list app feature videos probably know that I am a to doist user. And indeed, I do still use to doist. But it has to be said that compared to Microsoft to do's desktop app and their uh, web browser app, Todoist actually isn't as good at creating templates. Microsoft to do has some great templating features. Uh, their Mac app, which is now in the Mac store, doesn't have these templating features. So if you're watching this Microsoft, please make your Mac app have feature parity to the web browser version. But that being said, here in Microsoft to do, I can easily select whatever tasks I want. I can hit command or control to select specific tasks, or I can use shift to select a range of tasks. And then I can just right click and I can copy tasks to any new project that I'm building out. I could also move them, but because we're using a template here, we don't want to move things off. So we would want to copy or even better. If I haven't even created a new project yet, I can just duplicate the entire template over to a new thing that I can work from. So here I've got a templates folder that I built out. I can keep it collapsed if I want to just hide it or have it be out of the way most of the time. But when I need to use it, I can come in here. I can grab one of these templates that I've created. So let's say I'm going on a filming trip and I have to pack lots of cameras and SD cards and stuff. In addition to nail clippers and razors, I can just right click. I can duplicate the list and then I can rename it. I can move it to a new folder and I can work off it from there. Check things off. We're totally good to go. That being said, where I get the most value out of checklist templates is actually in Notion, which is, as I've talked about many, many times on this channel, one of my favorite productivity apps and probably the most powerful one that I use. So I run basically my entire video production operation out of Notion. And if you've seen my Notion video, which I'll link to in the description below, uh, in case you haven't seen it, I have a template that I create every single time that I want to make a new video. And I'm just going to show you briefly how that works, because there are some checklists in there uh, that I've been able to use. So if I go here, and I click templates and I click project template, it spawns a brand new instance of a project template that I can work from. So let's just call this test project for brevity, and I could fill these things out. But what I really want to show you are the checklist that it generates. Uh, so for editing, we have a specific editing checklist that is generated anew each time that we want to make a brand new video. So as we are working through the A cut through the B roll through the second stage of B roll, which is much more animation heavy, we can check things off as we go along. We also have a publishing checklist, which I find to be the most useful checklist in this project template, because there are a lot of things I have to do when I publish a new video to YouTube. There are all these little tiny things. And if I don't use a checklist, I'm going to forget to do at least one of them because it's just such a detail oriented process. Now, remember earlier on in the video when I said that you can use templates for more than just checklists? Well, Notion is a shining example of how you can kind of go beyond just a basic template. So for one example, I want to show you something that I've started doing recently. I have this little to do's area of my project template. And and here I'm actually using notions template block to give me the option to generate a checklist that actually lives somewhere else. 
So let me come out of this project template really quick and show you something that we've been building. We have something called the knowledge base in our Notion account. And I've been building what's called our video workflow tutorial. And eventually I'm going to have an entire documented process for basically every single step of our video creation process. And some of those steps essentially involve checklists. So for an on-location shoot, we have several different little mini lists of gear that we have to remember to bring. But not every single video is shot on location. A lot of them are done here in the studio, so I don't always need an instance of this checklist. And I want it to live here in our documentation just in case we hire somebody new, they can easily go through this logical progression of documentation and see what they need to do. But if I go over to my projects again, I have the option of generating a gear checklist. This just uses Notion's template block to make a brand new version. And as you can see, I can check things off and they are not going to affect the original version of that gear checklist. So you can have a checklist in your documents and then you can make new versions of it as you need. And on that note, it's gotta be said that there's a time and place for using checklist templates. If you have just a few things you need to get done, it's usually more effective just to write out a quick checklist from scratch. Not everything needs to be a template, but if you find yourself going through complex, multi-step processes on a regular basis, creating a template can be incredibly helpful. Now, using templates is one method for making the way in which you use your checklists and indeed the entire way in which you work more efficient. Now, if you'd like to take things even further, then you might wanna go check out my productivity systems course on Skillshare. Not only does it teach you my best methods for organizing your task manager, but it also covers calendars, note-taking systems, file management systems, and how to make them all work together so nothing ever slips through the cracks in your life. And guess what? You can actually take it for free by being one of the first 500 people to sign up for Skillshare using the link below. Doing that will get you a free two month trial with unlimited access to all of their classes, which means you'll also be able to take my brand new class all about building strong habits, along with thousands of others covering entrepreneurship, productivity, graphic design, music production, and lots, lots more. After the trial is over, Skillshare is still incredibly affordable at less than 10 bucks a month. And personally, I think my two classes alone are more than worth the price of admission there, but I'm really happy to be able to offer them on a platform that also gives you access to thousands of other classes from so many great teachers. So be one of the first 500 to sign up at that link below, grab that two month free trial and start learning today. And as always, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, definitely hit that like button to let YouTube's algorithm know that this content is worth watching because we are putting a lot of work into it these days. And uh, if you haven't already, you might also wanna go follow me on Instagram as I'm starting to post some in progress thoughts that eventually lead to videos and also some behind the scenes photos and other content from the production of our videos, which I think you're gonna like since we are really ramping up the production quality of these videos videos. Last but not least, I'm going to link to Matt's original video right over here. Definitely check that out if you haven't seen it already and get subscribed to Matt's channel. He makes amazing content. And you also might want to check out this interview I did with him right over here, which digs into his own work processes, the gear he uses, and how he stays motivated. I think you're really going to like it. So that is it. Go do whatever you want. I'm not your dad, but I will see you in the next video.